Hello, everybody. I'm Lee Cole. This is Wrestling with the Devil, and I'm here with my partner and friend, Renee. Renee, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Lee. How are you? Really good. Uh, so I want to get right into this. We are going to... Uh, Phil Donahue died, and uh, Phil Donahue is the first person that ever really got into the scandal with the WWF. At that time, it was the WWF. Yeah. So I want to get into that, and I'm going to tell people right now, exactly what happened that day. You hear from Dave Meltzer, John Arezzi, all these people, what happened that day. But here's the difference between me and them that day. I was with Vince McMahon. They were not. So I want to tell them about my first meeting with Vince McMahon, what was going on with my brother. And I'm going to show some of the video from the uh, Phil Donahue show from that day. And I'm going to give you guys a lot of information you do not have or you never had before about Vince McMahon when the, when the case... Uh, when my brother just decided to settle because my brother settled on a Sunday and on a Monday we were at the Phil Donahue show and I'm going to tell you exactly how it happened. You have any questions before we start that Renee? Um, no, I'm just very familiar with this because I actually watched it live. No, you have kid. no idea. Yeah, I have no I'm idea. what I'm My side saying. of the story. Oh, for sure. No, but I saw the show. <laughs> okay. Nobody's familiar with what I'm going to say. Nobody. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. No. Ever since he got that nice hat, he's been a wise ass. I know, right? I'm an asshole. Okay. So uh, I'm going to add this to the stage. And people, I'm going to tell you something right now. Here's what happened. So my brother settled on a Sunday with Vince McMahon. Uh, Vince McMahon came down to New York. And um, so he went to my brother's lawyer's office. They kept me out of the meeting. My lawyer did. Uh, later, I came to find out why. Uh, but... What happened was when my brother came back, I was uh, everybody was upset that he decided to go back and take his job and settle because he had a hell of a powerful case. And at that time, all these guys are riding his coattail. So I'm going to show you the guys riding his coattail in a minute. But here's what happened, people. I went down to, uh, so my brother told me the next day to, that he, he was going to be with Vincent to meet me um, down at Rockefeller Center. So I went there, and for the very first time, I met Vince McMahon at the Rockefeller Center. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that meeting and stuff, but I want to get into the show that they did that day, because this was on, the, the, these guys were all there, and they were taking, Vince McMahon showed up and took them on one on like six or seven, but they did not know that my brother had already settled. What happened, They uh, Barry Orton kind of had an idea that something was going on because I, I talked to Barry Orton every day and the night before I didn't talk to him. I was embarrassed. I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want the settlement to happen, but it wasn't my lawsuit. It was my brother's lawsuit. It was his decision. And so uh, I knew that I disappointed those guys. Uh, Bruno was really upset at me. Um, but after a week or so, they realized that I didn't want this. And then we started talking again. But there were a couple of days there. These guys were really pissed at me. They blamed me for my brother settling. I did not want to settle. It was my brother's decision, and uh, he wanted to go back to work, and that's what Vince promised him. But that's a whole different story. I want you to hear this. Bruno San Martino, you did appear on the Larry King uh, Live program uh, last week. Are you impressed with Mr. McMahon's apparent uh, acknowledgement here on this program, which was not forthcoming on that one, that maybe there is a problem? Some of these poor folks out there are sitting there listening to these guys, and when he makes them, they even applaud. Poor people, you don't know this man. Let me explain something to you. I retired. I was I wrestled from 1959 to 81, and I retired. When I came back in 84, Chicago commentator, believe you me, the world of wrestling that I left and the one that I found, it was bizarre. I mean, it was filled with drugs of all kinds. We're talking about steroids, but there was cocaine. In fact, this man who pretends like he wasn't aware, why didn't somebody come to me? One time I had to go to Arizona, to New Mexico, a different place because one of his druggies was, was, was out of it. And I took his place. And I really didn't care to at that stage of my life because I had retired. I specifically said to the man, hey, if I'm going to be going to this place in the arena, says I want to make sure that I don't drive with any of your wrestlers that are full of coke and whatever. So he arranged for this other old time wrestler, Jay Strongbow, for me to travel with him because I wouldn't be in a car because I was always afraid of a car being stopped full of drugs. And he said to me, don't worry, he says, I'll get the uh, agent to rent the car so you can go around with him. Well, let me just say. So think about that. So wow. Bruno's saying I, he left in 1981 
and wrestling was fine. The father, the father gives it to Vince, yeah. and he comes back three days year, three years later at a retirement. Yeah. Yep, I remember that too because when he became an announcer, it was with Jesse Ventura, and they didn't get along, right. and they had issues with each other. And Bruno really he could not understand. It was like bizarro world for him when he left in '79. Exactly. So know, when he comes, back, he, well, here's what he's saying here. He's saying here he came back. It's full of drugs. The yeah. wrestlers are taking steroids at a, a start really getting into the steroids at this time. Yeah. So this is the evidence that you guys have to understand. That shows that Vince McMahon let this happen. Yeah, and he's acknowledging it in the 80s, knowing about this shit. Yeah. This in behalf of uh, Mr. McMahon, first of all, uh, all these charges are yet to be proven. <laughs> they're just coming up. Uh, and if just, I want to get to this, uh, Bruno. Why? Well, yeah, that's I another thing. Why are they just now coming up? Let's understand this. You I get, can answer that question. What is it? Um, there's never been a forum for them before. I mean, if you, you have to understand that the um, wrestling business has always been a. You know what that is? That's uh, is that Meltzer boy? Yeah, before his face took a bad beat. Before his face melted. Fully close entity. It's like almost like an elementary school. You don't snitch. You don't tell. If something happens in the business, yeah. there was a friend of mine. Okay, and it has nothing to do with Vince McMahon. I don't want anyone to think it does. Who was murdered? Watch this though. He'll be kissing Vince McMahon. Screw that. He's careful. He plays both sides. Yep. In a dressing room. And it was very difficult. This was in Puerto Rico. And it was very difficult for the wrestlers, even in the... Let me play that back. He's talking about the murder of Bruiser Brody. Yes. Snitch, you don't tell. If something happens in... That maybe there is a problem. Some of these poor folks out there, are... it was bizarre. Hey, if I'm going to be going to these places in the arena, says I want... I want to get to this, uh, Bruno. Why? Well, yeah, that's another thing. Why are they just now coming up? Let's understand this. You I can't get, answer that question. What is it? Um, there's never been a forum for them before. I mean, if you, you have to understand that the um, wrestling business has always been a totally closed entity. The real reason they were coming out is because Tom Cole's lawsuit. That's why they were coming out. These yeah. guys would have never had none of this stuff. None of these guys were doing a damn thing at this time. When Tom's lawsuit dropped and Tom Cole came out is when this happened. Yeah. He, and and these guys all jumped on. They all rode his to, his coattail. They all forget that. The it's like almost like an elementary school. You don't snitch. You don't tell. If something happens in the business, yeah. there was a friend of mine. Okay, and it has nothing to do with Vince McMahon. I don't want anyone to think it does. Who was murdered in a dressing room, and it was very difficult. This was in Puerto Rico, and it was very difficult for the wrestlers, even in the murder. To go to the police the next day and tell the truth. It took one of the guys who was a friend of the guys says we've got to go tell the truth. And there was so much pressure right. on telling that you know that you don't snitch. I get it, but I this has to be this point has to be made. This these are men in groups. It sure not is not unlike the New York Mets. That's right. Some of whose members are now under a very big embarrassing gun well, of a charge brought by a woman. Just let me finish here. There, I guarantee you, there's nobody in this audience that's gonna that's going to drop over of indignation to discover that pot smoking may have taken place that throughout the seventies and eighties, especially when the money started rolling in cocaine started to take place. No doubt about that. And I guarantee you this bright audience knows damn well that steroids were used. This is easy to get. We know this. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Here's the question. Here's the question. Did the WWF or did the environment, or did people in power not only look the other way, but actually condone the loss of jobs, the loss of employment, because of bold, bold, unrestrained aggression of a sexual nature by employment, because of bold, bold, unrestrained aggression of a sexual nature by men in power on younger men who wanted to uh, rise within the system. Absolutely That's not. the question. Can I answer that question, Phil? Sure. Uh, last night on my radio program, I had two midget wrestlers on. and uh, We don't see them anymore, do we? No, we don't. We don't see them anymore. Them last night on my show, a midget wrestler by the name of uh, Karate Kid alleged that in a dressing room, Pat Patterson made some sexual advances towards him. Uh, the leader of the midget group, the leader. 
<laughs> well, I guess they weren't saying little people back then, so we got to put our <laughs> gloves on, Lee, and remember what 92 was like when people didn't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, the, the, the head of the midget group, and yeah. here we go. <laughs> here we go. Lord Littlebrook. Uh, went to Pat. No, it's, it sounds bizarre, and it is bizarre, but it's sad. Make the uh, story, please. Running out. Yes, okay. Lord Littlebrook went to Pat Patterson and said, "Leave this kid alone. He's not gay. He scared the little guy, you know, to tears." Uh, they were not used, but one time after that, after that sexual advance was uh, denied, denied. They were only used one more time, and the midgets right. have not been used since then. Vince McMahon. Here is the owner of the World uh, Wrestling Federation. Uh, and uh, he's already lost how many? Two or three executives have resigned. Two executives, Two executives and one announcer. Uh, one announcer. Yeah. Yes. Who worked right under him? What did Mr. McMahon know? And when did he? Okay. So the two executives that saw, that resigned were Terry Garvin, and they res and Pat Patterson. Yes. And the worker was Mel Phillips. They resigned, and that has nothing to do with these guys up here. Nothing. 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 They resigned Every because of my brother's lawsuit. Yep. But but these guys are not, they're not talking about the lawsuit because they know the night before that Tom met with Vince McMahon. A matter of fact, Tom's sitting in the audience next to Miss Elizabeth. Yeah. you were And they me. are looking up right now and they're seeing Tom sitting there with Linda McMahon and Miss Elizabeth right at them. And so, you know, they're like, holy fuck, we don't want to mention Tom's name because Vince wanted that. Vince was go Vince was going to ambush them and say... Well, there's Tom Cole right there. Yeah, I already settled with him. Yep. But, but Barry Orton was smart enough not to fall for it. He told the guys. Barry Orton goes, "I have not heard from Lee Cole. Do not mention the Ring Boy lawsuit here. Don't mention anything because I got a feeling that Tom Cole and Lee Cole might be in the building. That's what happened." They know it, and is it unfair to have asked him to give these guys the heave hole, given the complexity of these charges? Who's got the evidence? Who's going to believe who? Did he fire this and out? This is, this is, if it. <laughs> uh, here are uh, just uh, some scenes from what it is that is. Uh, mesmerizing uh, millions of Americans, a lot of them young people. Uh, these, uh, these pros in the wrestling game will tell you, a lot of the folks screaming the loudest in the audience are young people, uh, males and females. Uh, D Dave, uh, you're editor of the Wrestling Observer. Do you see Mr. McMahon coming, uh, coming forward here to uh, open the door at least to the possibility here? Are you impressed with what he has said here in the first part of our program? It, it, it surprises me, and I'm I'm glad he said it because um you're glad he said what I'm glad he admitted that there was a possibility because none of us know for sure maybe maybe Barry does okay um and uh, Murray and Tom okay I don't know for sure it's one person's word against another and maybe if the executives told Vince that this didn't happen maybe they were telling the truth and maybe they're not I can't tell you for sure although I will. What no a flip flopping little turd. Well, he's just playing both sides, you know. He's just he's playing on both sides. Side. He is a clown. Dave Meltzer, this is Dave Meltzer's whole life. Yeah. Playing both sides of the fence. This explains so much on his character. This yes. I didn't never pay attention to the way he spoke here. Yeah, and this is him. He, him. he doesn't want to piss off Vince McMahon. He don't want to get the guys there pissed off, but he's gonna play both sides. Yep. I'll say this. I do believe Barry's story. Um, he took a polygraph and I've spent a lot of time discussing it with him. And I think that I'm pretty decent at uh, talking to wrestlers and, and separating the fact from the fiction. And I believe Barry's story. Some of the, take the time to Barry, please, to sir, say that the big what the big story really was, was not was not really the story where I sat between uh, Pat Patterson and Terry Garvin. But shortly thereafter, there was another instance. And I remember I'm 19 years old. And I drove from Amarillo to Albuquerque, New Mexico, with a single passenger being Terry Garvin, who about 40 miles outside of town started uh, proposing that he perform oral sex on me while I was driving, begging me to let me to let him do so. And of course, because I was young, I didn't want to lose a position or a shot. And I don't have homophobia. I have no problem with you know. I'm, I'm a First Amendment person. I believe everyone has a right to do whatever they want to do. Right. Uh, 
<clears throat> and, and, and I told him as nicely as I could, please don't be offended, but that's not, you know, what I'm into. Notice Vince McMahon's face there. Yeah. He, he took he, a deep like, breath. <laughs> Vince McMahon did not like when Barry Orton was talking. Do you know no. why? Because he knew Barry Orton was telling the truth. Yep. And, and nothing personal. And, you know, I'm still your friend, but no thanks. And he did this. Uh, every 40 or 50 miles, he would start again, and, he, and, and it got harder and harder to talk about. That happened, that's horrible, but that happened. Well, let well. him finish his point. And your but point, Barry, is... My point is, is that uh, Dave, Dave Meltzer just said, I have taken a polygraph about all this right. stuff and, and but, came back totally clean. My point is, is that if he was attracted to young men and, and, and younger, because I even heard the stories of the uh, kids underage back then. His behavior then, towards you makes him what makes you wonder about how he may behave toward others. Is this the point? Yeah, even and now. And you also I mean, want to know what? I mean, we, you know, you can't, you, we're not, you don't want to get the posse and the rope and the tree limb for Vince on this, something. do you? No, I don't. I, I don't want to get the posse and the rope for Vince. However, this has been going on in the dressing room in the WWF. With, and I'm talking, you know, under, under uh, Title Seven of the Code and uh, the law. It says that any unwelcome sexual advances, touching, or anything else is sexual harassment. Right. Now, we have these guys who are bookers and top executives, and believe me, I'm out of here before they are. I know I can't go and complain. I'm sorry. Now, you can say whatever you want to say, and you know no. that to be true. They have the power. No matter what you say, you're going to be dismissed. I'm gone because, because oh. they are more important yes. than I am. Yeah. You wanted to say, Bruno, very briefly, with all kinds okay. of folks in this audience who haven't even had a chance, they're okay. coming after me here. McMahon, I'm going to need you in just a minute. McMahon, McMahon said, why didn't they go to the authorities? What you folks don't know is that you don't go to the authorities if you want to eat because you're married to get dead. You're finished. Cup with black box. His father blackballed me all over the country, not for this, for some other issue. Well, okay. let's not they, bring in that. No, I won't. I won't. I'm, I'm sure just talking a... about that. There's no union. Right. There's no protection for the wrestler. Very you good. speak up, you're okay. dead. Vince McMahon, here's the charge. You had to see this. Your agents right under, your, uh, right under you on the organization chart are accused. Now that you see this, and you have not seen this in years, yeah. it makes you really understand even more everything that's been, been said Yes. Time. You, know, it, you could tell that nobody up there is fucking lying. No, no. And, and you could tell by Vince's expression that they're telling the truth and it's bothering the shit out of him. Yes, it is. Two of them have resigned, including an announcer. Where were you all these years? Were, was the money so good? Was the glamour so great? Was the business exploding so wonderfully that you didn't have time to get into uh, this kind of thing and you look the other way and allowed it to happen? And once again, he said two of them, they resigned because of my brother, my brother. Nothing yes. to do with any of those guys up on stage, people. Like they, no. like Dave Meltzer's up there, John Arezzi, nothing to do with any of them. They're yeah. just riding the coattails right here. Happen. That seems to be the way, the way this charge is evolving against you. Well, I certainly didn't look the other way. There's no reason for me to look the other way and risk everything that we have going on. You didn't know what any Barry... of this was going on, Mr. McMahon? No, I did not. What Barry... Vince McMahon's Gosh. lying. He used to walk through the back room and see the boys back there. Yep. He always knew. They always went to him and complained, and people lost did, their jobs. Did Vince you see McMahon. the way his eyebrows raised when he said no? I'm I'm excellent in finding out when people are lying to me. Just I'll tell you why later. But when his eyebrows raised making like reference that, to uh, is an yeah. act some 14 years ago. 14 right years ago, that see that? Wait, wait, wait. That's a tell right there. That's a tell. Okay, give me one minute. Stop, you're okay. dead. Vince McMahon, here's the charge. You had to see this. Your agents right under your uh, right under you on the organization chart are accused. Two of them have resigned, including an announcer. Where were you all these years? Were, was the money so good? Was That's the glamour space. so great? Was the business exploding so wonderfully that you didn't have time to get into uh, this kind of thing and you looked the other way and allowed it to happen? That seems to be... The way, the way this charge is evolving against you. Well, I certainly didn't look the other way. There's no reason for me to look the other way and risk everything that we have going on. You didn't know what any Barry... of this was going on, Mr. McMahon? No, I did not. What Barry is making reference to is an act some 14 years ago. 14 years ago, that happened. How am I supposed to? I don't know that that happened. This yeah. is the first time hearing of it on the, on the show the other day. Yeah. Do you believe it? It could very well have happened. And to that extent, if in fact it did happen, once again, just so you know, Terry Garvin, the guy that Barry Orton's accusing of doing it, has resigned. So he yeah. no, so and he never came back to work at the WWE, WWF. 
So you know that he, he they never brought him back. They knew yeah, that. Yeah, and he, he was him. young. He was in his 20s when this happened. So it's not like he had a career-ending injury. But again, those individuals whom these allegations are being brought against are no longer with me. I don't know what else more I can do other than to garner as much information as I possibly can. So you know who Barry Orton's uncle is, right? I mean, yes. he's the uncle of Randy Orton. Yeah, Cowboy Bob was is, was brothers with his dad, yeah. And to see that yeah. if, in fact, some of this was going on, that it doesn't happen again. You know, uh, we're always going to have wrestling. The question is, how threatened now is this empire? You, you, are you acknowledging here that, uh, Billy, that you, uh, you actually introduced young wrestlers to steroids? I'm acknowledging that Hulk Hogan came to me in 1977 in Tampa, Florida, and, and, and inquired about steroids. Right. Because he wanted to be a wrestler. You and know, I, I want to tell you him, what. I, I don't, want, gave him I don't want to send him to jail for that. No, no, I'm not. 1977, that's, that's how you did it. I and we didn't know. Him. All right. I freely but gave you, him you, you look back on it and you say, holy cow, that was no, wrong. But the point is, I freely gave the man that information in 1977. But the fact of the matter is, now he has gone on the Arsenio Hall show and lied to a national, a national audience that he has never taken steroids except for three occasions. And those three occasions being for therapeutic use only for a torn bicep. I've injected the man myself probably a half a dozen times. David Schultz, a close friend of mine, has injected yeah. him over 200 times. And Hulk Hogan himself has told me personally superstar i knew nothing about steroids when i began but why and, and for the first year i took a shot every day of my life every day for the for the first yeah. year until i learned how to cycle steroids yeah. Bill, but my point is my point is Bill, Phil, you're you having a very big income here but with you can't, this that's right, but you, you can't think? lie to children in this country about drugs that's child abuse when you get on television and you say you have never taken steroids and you've done it for the whole 10 years and, 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 and when you and when you've taken steroids for the decade of the 80s and when you've taken cocaine and other drugs and you and you, and you lie about this to children that is child molestation gotcha. of their minds gotcha. you can't lie to kids about John drugs. Arezzi, yeah. you want to say sir didn't then say uh on in published reports that you were devastated when hulk hogan made those statements on arsenio i wasn't devastated that was the word used to me it was well it was all right <laughs> it was in the I don't, recall, I don't recall using the word devastated uh hulk hogan i think told the truth the question is as far as the media is concerned is whether or not he told i don't the whole told, truth i don't believe it's the truth and, and let me just say this three Firstly, times is not the truth okay first of all let me say this that as you readily would recognize, Superstar, as you started this whole steroid phenomenon in undoubtedly professional wrestling, it seems to me that we're losing sight of the fact that steroids were legal at the time. I mean, it was not, just as not, legal. Not, not, not in not some legal. states they were, and they were not legal in okay, Florida. Federal, well, fine, but I, you know, they were legal in Florida. The, the issue Florida is, and, yes, they're, 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 they're not legal now. They lie. Okay. The children are right. not legal. Right. Right. That's why we insisted yeah. yeah. our steroid yeah. Yeah. you got to admit, this is really good stuff, ain't it? It is good stuff, and it's a good distraction from the really horrible shit. The steroid thing is very interesting to mass audiences. So ask me, stuff. and nobody has. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to string up a guy who took these uh, this uh, nope. football wrestling whatever in the seventies or eighties before the sunshine started to come down on us about the terrible side effects of this drug your your point about the, your accusation that he lied is a different hello hi to the three men on the end yeah. who lost their jobs yeah how many people in the world wrestling federation today are performing sexual favors to keep their jobs well today uh i would have to say i don't know because the two main culprits i guess have resigned and stepped down when, when you were when you were working there percentage wise uh well percentage wise i can't really i can't really say like you know 30 percent 50 percent i know of, of of at least one person right. that was there from beginning to end. If you and I, man, what a great show, Donnie, you have. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay, I've got to understand something. You have to understand the rest. Do you see this guy right here? This yes. this kid standing up. Yes. His name's is Barnes. He was planted in the audience by Vince McMahon. He's really? a plant. So. He's been trying to get up at all this time. This guy eventually came forward and said that uh, he was uh, the R word by Mel in a car. Uh, I know him. I met him several times uh, back then. So I just yeah. wanted to let you know. And he admitted to me that Vince McMahon planted him in the audience. 
wrestling by coming forward right now i'm done man i'll never wrestle ever ever again under any circumstances i am done yeah, yeah but when you have a family to support and you're talking about your livelihood you throwing it out the window yourself that that man said he saw a child being abused if that's true no, i said he i said when you lied i said when you lied to children when you lied to children that is that is child uh -huh. abuse that's that was my point yeah, I didn't, uh, bruno you wanted to say i wanted to tell that young lady Please, they were reported. We told you the parking lot no. incident. When it was reported to them, they said, well, what they do in their own time, they, they didn't care. Don't Over you understand here. that? Over they here. didn't yeah. care. Um, first of all, I think that it's a shame that seven of the people on the, six of the people on the panel, with the exception of Mr. Meltzer, are sitting there accusing Mr. McMahon, who so far has done nothing wrong. Mr. That's, that guy's a plant. Yeah. Mr. McMahon planted him in the audience, people. See, yeah. you guys have watched it before, but I'm the only one that knows this. Because I talked to that kid. That kid that kid went with me on Curtis Sliwa's show. He is a plant. Sir, oh, I know you've been in jail, Mr. San Martino. Your son was fired under very suspicious circumstances. How can <laughs> you sit here no and he brings up Bruno San Martino's son? Yeah. And how, how would he young, know that? Yeah. Up, how did this young guy in the audience know this stuff? Well, Vince, this Vince, is what kind of dirtbag people is, Vince people, Vince McMahon is people. He planted this guy. Mr. McMahon out here. of personal vendettas. Yeah. None of that has any You don't know what you're talking yeah. about, Sonny. When you grow up, maybe you'll understand a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering why people go into wrestling in the first place. Money. I mean, they know it's not a pure art form. Even just looking at wrestling, you can see that, that what? it's tacky and it looks... <laughs> people love this. But you can tell it's There's pleasing a just by looking at it. A lot of people love the very serious issue here. A lot I got a break. Are you there, caller? Yeah. I can't talk to you. Well <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, people, I'm going to uh, play this part, and then we'll move on. But this, Murray Hodgkins is going to come up, and he was he had a lawsuit against Vincent. It was settled. And I'm going to tell you a little story about Murray so you know why he just disappeared from the scene. Accused, accused of gay sexual harassment. He'll have a prepared statement. First, let's get the charges underway here. Gentlemen, Murray Hodgson, hired by Vince McMahon, here on my left for the TV job. You were the commentator. Uh, and then fired two months later. What happened? Can you, specific, can you specifically, and without taking us around the world, tell us what is it that happened to you? I wouldn't sleep with the vice president of operations, so they fired me. Is the... Uh, uh, is the vice president of operations one of those who resigned? Yes, he is. And do you want to name him? I don't think that'd be necessary. He's talking about Pat Patterson. Necessary. Um, what did you, you did you announce? Did you do any color for any telecast? Yes. About how long did you do the color? Oh, I started for about a month. They hired me for a two-year deal and just went right out the window when I decided that uh, I didn't want to sleep with the vice president. Was there any touching? Was there any kind of vulgar uh, locker room uh, activity? We're trying to be specific here, Murray, as a court of law would oblige uh, any person to be of any gender. It was a little worse than that. He uh, blatantly threatened my job security. He didn't say sleep with me, did he? Is that the way men talk? <laughs> I don't think I don't think this is the proper forum to be I agree with you, and I appreciate details. very much you're bringing a certain amount of decorum to this. This is a daytime television show, and we don't want to draw any dirty pictures. Uh, did it happen more than once? No. Just once? Yeah. And then how long after you said no were you dismissed? A couple of weeks. Barry Orton. Here's Barry O, the former professional wrestler who you think you lost your job with the WWF after refusing similarly. Actually, no, I've never actually said that. Yeah, that's something that the media has come out, and uh, with the stories that I've given, they have kind of turned it around to where I've said that. I've never said that. However, I had encounters with uh, two of the gentlemen that have resigned since the allegations began. And these, uh, these uh, incidents, of course, happened in 1978, which is a long time ago. However, the impact and the gravity of the situations are, are very severe. And, you know, if, if they were behaving that way then, and, yeah. um, you know, they would behave, be behaving that way now, I would expect. Uh, no laugh here. Uh, uh, you accuse an executive grabbing your crotch, legs, and chest and wouldn't stop. Yeah, well, I was in between uh, the two of them in the backseat of the car. 
and that's and that's what they did. Same thing with my brother. That's what they did. They would grab guys and they would put them under intense pressure. Well, that's right. You were in the center, right? You thought it to be a place where a junior guy has to sit. Pretty much. This yeah. would be early '80s. Uh, this was 1978. 78. Oh, right. So this is before the billion-dollar wrestling mania, pay TV, Hulk Hogan. Oh yes. Era. Uh, and you had to drive. You know, you guys weren't weren't walking in money then you, you right you know. and everyone you know uh, the more people in the car the better because everyone would split the expenses and uh, right keep their cars. and then you didn't you don't you saying that you got out of the car and said uh, not me and uh, oh, oh yeah you know went on for several minutes i finally demanded that the car be bad first i thought it was kind of funny that they were joking but then it became you know her harassment right barry it would be hard for a jury to feel a whole lot of sympathy for a guy of your size you know what i mean uh a a, a a, uh, a helpless woman you're not. Um, how old were you when this transpired? 19 years old. Uh -huh. Probably about 35 pounds lighter. And also probably not altogether together in your head, like a lot of 19-year-olds. I don't know. Oh, I'm absolutely not. You know, and I was trying to be accepted into, you know, into the business. Yeah. I was young, I was green. And you, you know. got the big dream ahead of you. Maybe you're going to be the big guy. And there was money if you got on the main car. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're following your dream, and uh, I suppose you want us to know, among other things, that uh, when a couple of guys in the game, executive types, come on to you like that, and you're 19 years old, you may, you know, you may be a little hesitant to tee them off. Of course. You know, and so I, I endured it for as long as I could until it became, uh, you know, I started feeling suffocated or, uh, you know, uh -huh. and I couldn't take it anymore. Okay, this part coming up is the best part because this is one guy that, Totally out debated, wipe the floors with Vince McMahon. Here we go. Lawsuit. <laughs> Do you believe that sexual harassment exists in your workplace? I believe that there is a possibility of sexual harassment existing everywhere. And I, I asked directly want, if it was in the I World Wrestling want it Federation. In my organization. I don't want it. I'd like to reiterate the question. Do you believe there is sexual harassment amongst the wrestlers or employees of the World Wrestling Federation today? There is a possibility of that. That's why I have these uh, independent investigators to come in. And who are these That's independent investigators? Fairfax Group Limited. And I would like uh, you know, to hear what you have to say, and everyone has to say. I want to get to the bottom of it. Would you therefore believe that because of all these allegations coming forward and more and more corroborating evidence proving that there's no doubt sexual harassment is running rampant in the World Wrestling Federation, that you are definitely going to come public and do something about it? Why wouldn't I? If in fact that is the case, why wouldn't I do something about it? Why would I risk what we have? Because you haven't done anything about it until it became public, because you thought because it was under the water. Because I had no knowledge of it. I made knowledge of it to you when I was fired, and you just blew it off and let me go. You I retained were fired a lawyer. because you were not very good. You were not a very good announcer. You could not. That's the only reason why you were fired. See, right there, that's where Vince should have not said that. You know, yeah. that, Because one, you could see that this guy is very smart. He sounds like an announcer. Yep. Very good looking guy. He has yes. every he has the package to be an announcer. Let's yeah, Donahue even said thank you for the decor. You know, we're a daytime yeah. show, the professionalism. Exactly. You could not make the transition from radio to television. That is the only reason why you were fired. I would like to remind you, sir, that I have a two year contract. Two you years. You also have a clause in your contract that states, and as you know, you were hired on a trial basis. I was not hired you on a trial a basis. You, you do you not have a contract? Mr. McMahon, I have a two-year deal in with that your contract, firm. contract, you will note, in a clause that states very clearly, and I have it outlined for all to see here today, that you can be fired almost at whim. If, in fact, you're not doing a good job. You did a horrible job. That's the only reason why you were fired. Imagine this. This poor man right here lost his job. And now he's being told on national TV that you sucked. You were yeah. no good. Yeah, and see, this McMahon's proving right here exactly what happens to people that that tell Pat Patterson no. So many people were released in that company because of Pat Patterson and them not accepting his advances. Exactly, this is a perfect example right here, people. And he had no documented uh, facts of Murray being terrible. There were no uh, write-ups as we do as managers. None of that. He just that was it. No way. Yeah.
fired. That's it. Maybe I should point out, first and foremost, that might be your inability to uh, pick good talent. It could you be. You had a national Granted. talent search, Vince McMahon. It could be. You advertised in Billboard magazine and across many different media sources searching for one man that could be the new face and voice of the World Wrestling Federation. You flew me in back and forth four and five different times from Detroit, and you chose over the course of one year of negotiations that I would be the man for that job. I didn't sleep with your vice president. Two weeks later, I'm fired. I also... He buried him there. Buried him. So, so four times he flew him in. He went up against hundreds of people across the country. And Vince McMahon seen something in him. And one thing we know about Vince McMahon, he has that ability to see special things in people. Yeah. I also want to point out one very important fact. From your office came a letter to my landlord to verify my employment. From that letter, it, I must bring this point up. It says, Murray Hodson has a very secure job with Titan Sports and is a positive and productive employee from your office. Man, Just I because I don't sleep with your vice president, that qualifies to blow me out of a two-year deal? I don't buy it. Right. Did you ever think you see someone trash McMahon that bad? No, and no one has ever trashed him that bad. Not like, that. I mean... He decimated he, him. He took him apart on every angle and left he him. Was he yeah. was ready. He was ready. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Said very well, but I believe untrue. If, in fact, these allegations against Pat Patterson, whom you won't name, are true, why not pursue the legal course, the legal recourse? Why not pursue? We are doing that right now. You are. And you are aware that you waited six months after you were let go to bring these homosexual charges against Pat Patterson. Six months. You wait. You know what he waited for? What? He waited for my brother's lawsuit to come out. See, that's the problem. All these guys waited. They didn't do anything till Tom came out. That's the most. Uh, and Tom's sitting in the audience right now. And they're, they're not mentioning ring boys because they know they better not. Yep. Waited. Why? September 14th. If, in fact, you were fired on the spot, if you were fired for incompetence, all right, why didn't you say right then, why didn't you say, hey, look, Vince, your, your vice president made a pass at me. You never told me that. No one had any knowledge. Human resources had no knowledge of that. Rene Dubose was waiting to hear your story. Why did you wait six months? You asked me for $160,000 today, otherwise you were coming on this program. I'm happy Excuse you're me? on this program. Mr. McMahon, do not try to deflect the truth here. First what and are you foremost, asking for? How much money have you asked for? I have never asked for any amount of money from you. You have tried to buy me off to shut up so I wouldn't come forward and tell of these allegations that's running through the World Wrestling Federation. Your attorney should be consulted. My attorney, on September of 1991, came forward to you with a letter direct to you telling you exactly what happened and that I was discharged wrongfully. I had a two-year contract and that you too were well aware of the fact that there was a homosexual advance made against me. Don't tell me I waited six months. Three weeks later, I was on months. your rear end. Three six months later? weeks later. No. The only no. reason we waited a little longer was because you... That didn't, <laughs> that didn't sound right. I was on your rear end. Yeah, it did sound pretty <laughs> funny. I, it's funny. The 15-year-old version of me never caught that, but I caught that shit today. <laughs> you continued to try to negotiate to buy me out, and I wouldn't Murray, allow it. The fact of the matter is if you look into this man's past, the fact of the matter, if you look into your I don't think we should be breaking up the oh, past. I guess not. The okay, issue sure. at hand All here, right. Mr. McMahon, okay. is one thing and one thing only. You addressed on Larry That's King Live Friday. It's Friday on CNN. Issue. You went on and you said that I never worked for the World Bodybuilding Federation. I am on a video that is sold around worldwide. True, your my voice. Is. So you told me you told the country that I didn't work for the World well, Wrestling Federation. You weren't a You were a freelance and you were hired. Well, of course not. Right. But you were Second of all, you said you fired me. You yes. didn't fire me. John Filippelli not only gave me the letter, but he also fired me. John felt so bad that I was being released that he allowed me to stay at his house if I wanted to and be with his family until I could find further place to live. And that's, my friend, speaks to all of the good deeds and good people throughout the World Wrestling Federation. We're talking about three people here. We're talking about three people and only three people that have these brought these allegations against. We're not talking about the 300 
We're not talking about all of the rustlers and things of that nature. Let's keep some balance here. Let me make the point. What Vince is doing right now is he's trying to bait them to yeah. mention Tom. He said only three people. He's trying to get them to say, well, what about Tom Cole? Yeah. But they know Tom's sitting right there with Elizabeth. Well, look at his eyes. Look who he's looking at right now. Is he looking in the direction of them? You were there. Yeah. <laughs> that this uh, very important uh, conflict transpires at a time that uh, the all-time star of the wrestling game, Hulk Hogan, felt obliged to go on the Arsenio Hall show to say, I do not use <coughs> steroids, only to be followed by a number of... Uh, I don't believe you said that, Phil, if I can... Uh, well, he said I used, what, three times... Uh, he did admit to steroid usage. Uh, he, he said three times. Yes. And we have now several people stepping forward to say, listen, I sent Federal Express packages. They were picked up here and there. Uh, this is not to suggest that we know the absolute answer to this. This is re rather to call your attention to the fact that now some inquiry extends to Hulk Hogan. Why is that important? Because he's on just about every kind of child's toy you can buy. We're talking Hasbro here. Some of the biggest giants in the manufacturing of toys are, and the images. This is, he's not yet Mickey Mouse, but one, but one billion dollars worth of business. How much at risk is this? And how much will steroid, uh, the steroid uh, controversy uh, find its way? Okay, I just want to end that now. But now that you watch this years later, Renee, what do you notice now that you didn't notice the first time you watched it? Okay, well, well, seeing it with adult eyes and not teenage eyes, like when I saw it before, what I'm noticing is the mannerisms, you know, the things that Vince was doing every time a question was uncomfortable, his eyebrows will peak up, his voice would change, lots of deflection, um, and then absurdity, like when he's like, oh, well, this just speaks of the good people in the World Wrestling Federation. Even the audience laughed at that bullshit. And what I got to give the guys credit for is they did a good job. They knew not to mention Tom. Yeah. And and I talked to Barry a couple of days after that. And Barry told me, he said, Lee, we we seen Tom. Once we once we seen him sitting there with Elizabeth and Miss uh, Elizabeth and, and McMahon's wife, Linda, we knew not to say anything because Vince was going to use that against us. So wisely, Vince is trying to bait him into saying yeah. something, but they wouldn't do it. I never saw that until now. I never, right. I never saw. Nobody that. knew that. Nobody knew that. Yeah. So just and just so I told people that I was in the green room in the back. Yeah. I, they asked me to come sit out there. I said no. I was embarrassed. Barry Orton was my friend. Bruno San Martino was my friend. I felt like I betrayed them. Yeah. Uh, I felt like that. I felt awful, and and so I stayed in the back. And uh, but like I said, this was Tom's decision. Yeah. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm going to talk after this, after the show here, we all got together. We got and we drove back to Titan Towers and, uh, and Tom and I spent the next two days there, three days. I eventually left, which I wish, wish I didn't never left because of what was going to happen to my brother at that point. But the fact of the matter, when Phil Donahue passed away, the main reason that I am showing this today is because. I wanted you to see it. See, I forgot all about this. I didn't really watch this in a long time. Yeah. And now that you watch it, you could see they're talking about the guy stepping down, what Pat Patterson was doing, Terry Garvin, yeah. Mel Phillips. It's so blatant. And the kid standing up in the audience, the Barnes guy. Yeah, I never saw that part. That was astounding that he came up in the, and said that to Bruno. I mean, obviously... He, uh, that you know, court, that that's that Barnes guy is fourteen years old. Yeah, he room. wouldn't. He, it, that he was a kid. He wouldn't have known that. Yeah, he's my age now. So he talked. He talked to Vince McMahon's people. They literally planted him in the audience. Yep. That's so crazy. you could tell he stood up there and said, "Why are you going after him? Why are you going?" He after knew him? too much about Bruno. That was the tell right there, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, exactly. Fourteen year old. It's like brother. He retired when you were one years old. What do you know about Bruno? <laughs> and so. And, you know, rest in peace, Phil Donahue. He did a great job. One of the few people that did a fantastic job. He wasn't afraid to put it out. He no. did it. And, we uh, need more guys like Phil today. There are none. Yeah. And and the fact of the matter is that that would have went a whole lot worse because Tom Cole was supposed to be sitting up there. If Tom Cole was up there, that's it. 
that he wasn't there. He we, he decided to settle, and Vince wanted so badly for them to say something. I want to talk about one thing. When I was there that day, when I met Vince, and he got out of the limousine, and I mentioned this a couple of times, Vince came out, me and him went together, and Tom went with Miss Elizabeth and with uh, Linda McMahon. Yeah. And one thing I remember, and I always tell people this, the charisma that Vince McMahon had was incredible. Um, more people were interested in him than Elizabeth. That's how much charisma he had. Yeah. And if you could see the people around, the crowds and stuff. And I remember because when Vince and I got in the elevator, everybody else from his team was getting in and he told them, no, he wanted to be in the elevator with me alone. And we talked, we went upstairs, then we went into another room and talked alone because that's the first time I met Vince. Vince knew nothing about me. And Vince was like, he wanted to see, he knew that I was the one that put this together. And at that time, he wanted to see exactly what was going on. The difference between myself and my brother, I was a lot more street smart. I was older, wiser, and um, I, I, I had a child. I was divorced, you know, and Tom was still a young kid. And so, people, I want you to see that so you can understand exactly what really happened. And think about that. You know, a lot of people have not seen that. They've heard about Phil Donahue, but that's why I played it. Because I can give you the view that nobody else there can. Because I was sitting in the green room in the back. And I was with Vince McMahon at that time. And Linda McMahon. And the most beautiful woman i ever seen. Uh, Miss Elizabeth. And what made her so beautiful is she had an innocence about her. And a beauty. Which was... Yeah. You, you can't even describe it. And that I was, was 15 at the time, Lee. Trust me. I remember. <laughs> when that was 1992. Where, yep. where you know, I'm 32 years old. And... Uh, and um, my brother's a young guy. And and so, so when Linda was there, Linda just walked next to Tom everywhere. Tom was as happy as could be. He was hanging out with, with Elizabeth. And at that time, Elizabeth was leaving Randy Savage, and he was being protected by Linda McMahon, Hulk Hogan, and his wife. Okay, with that, anything else you'd like to say? No, I just wanted to thank people for watching. And please hit that uh, like and subscribe button. And have a great day, everybody. Do you find that very interesting stuff, though, once you watch it again? Yes, I'm probably going to go and watch the whole episode later on. Okay, everybody, take care. Thank you, and uh, let us know what you think. Please, subscribe, like, comment, share, and if you don't do that, that's fine. Join our membership. We also have a membership also. Take care.